Welcome to Generate Beautiful Documentation with ALDoc. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, if you were at Directions EMEA or uh, thereabout, you would have seen Microsoft um, showcasing a new tool to generate technical documentation for, for your apps. Um, so what objects are, do you have in, in, in the, in the app and what functions are there and parameters and all that good stuff and um, and they showcased um, like this thing so now you can go on to learn.microsoft.com and you can you know, find the base 64 uh, code unit and then you can click on that and see that there's a function and what parameters and some, some documentation um, and that was generated with AL doc, but we did not have it yet. But we do now. Well, sort of. Um, so uh, let me actually go into this guy. Um, so here is Visual Studio Code. But this is, you know, you can see that, that the, the icon is the green icon. That's because I run the Visual Code Insider. Uh, there's a video on that, by the way. Um, but in this insider version, I have installed, uh, let's see if we can get this. I'm running, and, 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 and this is weird because I need to, we need to zoom crazy out. There you go. You can see I'm running version 12 of the A language here. So not the version for Business Central 2023 way one, I'm running the AL extension for wave two that we get in October. So this is the pre-release and you can get that by clicking switch to a preview release. And this is not because I already did it, then I have to switch back to release version. I keep my pre-release AL in together with my pre-release uh, Visual Studio Code. And then I keep the, the current production versions in in the other one. So you can see down here, I got the blue icon for the normal Visual Studio Code and the green one for, for this one. Anyway, part of version 12 here is AL doc. And, and what is AL doc? Well, so if we go to, I go to users, Eric, dot VS code. In this case, I go to VS code insider because I'm using the one with the green uh label let me actually make this just uh, bigger so you guys can see it um and i go to extensions and i find the ms dynamics um and make sure you're, you're the 85 80 79 at least the other version has some issues so if you're on the news this is the news as recording of this video on uh august 30th um so in here and if i go to to bin um wow you can see that we have alc the l compiler we have al uh, the al tp gen so the generator for crm tables and now we have al doc here so you can you can go al doc and then you see there's no verb selected in it, refresh, build, help, and version. Um, so we got the tool now, and, and that is, uh, that's pretty cool. So let me show you how you can actually get the tool running. Uh, let's go back to the documentation for, for a second here. Um, this is not the one I want. Uh, so let's find AL doc at Microsoft Learn. Here we are. So generating help with the AL doc tool. Um, and, and since this is this pre-release thing, so in here, that's there, there's no way place you can click and then it will run and do fancy stuff for you. It's all in the command line uh, and then you gotta find it like I just did. Um, but AL doc is only half of the tool. So um, 
ALDoc generates input to another Microsoft tool, Microsoft tool called DocFX. So if we try that, we can see that that's a, that's a whole thing. Um, and it can do all sorts, of, all sorts of crazy stuff because this is basically used all over Microsoft to generate stuff like this. Um, so this one, if we go back to this page, then so so you gotta you gotta do some stuff. First of all, you gotta have .NET on your machine. If you do not have .NET on machine, you need to install .NET. So if I type .NET, uh, and and we can actually let's use the command here. So I we go for this one. We can see that I have just uh, .NET version seven installed on my machine. That's all I use, and this works fine on, on version seven. Let me just go back to the folder I was in here before this. Uh, so I'm good on .NET. The next thing is to install docfx. And there is a command here, docx.net tool update dash G for global docfx. Uh, so I did that and then nothing worked. And, and uh, Microsoft was, helpful uh, and told me that uh, <laughs> I think they added this to the documentation after um, after I had my issue because it will only work on 270.0 but if you just do this command here you'll get 270.1 so this command will not work what you have to do is that you have to go .NET tool install and do docfx dash 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 wow dash dash version and then 270 and then dash g for global and it's already installed me so so that is that is the command you have to use in order to get the right version so what's here currently will Give you the wrong version and stuff will just break in a weird way that is it's very hard to figure out um, so i will see if i can remember to put this in uh in the description below uh otherwise ping me so now we have talk effects we know where this thing is sitting so uh, so we know where that is now we actually get into the process and and the the as i said this is a two step so first we have to generate some input to docfx and we do that with the with the al doc tool um, and there are two commands there is an init and then there's a build uh, and and we saw that when when we ran um, this one we have an init we have a build um, and then we have a refresh if we want the to grab the latest template we can also do that actually let's let's um, let's try to put that into into the script um, so we we init and and the init we need to give it a a folder it can work with and then we need to give it tell what dot app files we should document um and, and right now in my demo i'm just documenting one um but you can have more than one and then you have cross reference uh, so after you do the init then you do the build uh, and it's almost the same so you do build and then you again you tell to that path and you tell dash esh that's s which is the source uh, so that's the app file that you want to document and the c is if you need if they need to cross reference you'll see when i'm running this in a, in a second that you get some error saying i don't know what templop is because templop is part of system uh, uh, application and i don't want to document a system application in my website uh, it would be pretty cool if, if Random idea to uh, to those from Microsoft will probably listen to this. If 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 I could instead of having system application trying that it will need my documentation that it could link to a 
for this guy. That'll be cool. Um, anyway, it's probably a version two thing. After we build, then we're only done with the first part of it. So now we have a bunch of YAML files and, and, and stuff, and, and we can now ask docfx to actually build a documentation website. And it's a simple command, docfx build and point to the folder where we just generated the stuff. So this one, uh, so see here, it, that's O. So that's O will be the same folder as the parameter to docfx build where there is a file called dot docfxjson. And then docfx is, is nice enough also to be a web server. So after that, you can point it to, uh, to what's just generated. So we can try to browse into it. Um, so in order for me not just to sit here and type and type and type, um, I did create a small script. So you can see the four steps are here. Uh, and actually we could, how, why don't we, Try that refresh thing and add that into also. There we go. So the first, ignore the first two. That's just because so I'm able to run this again and again and again. So I start by deleting whatever I have, uh, and then I recreate the output folder. So output as a subfolder to where I'm running this will be where I want this. So you can see that I, I call ldoc in it. And then saying that output folder is where I want this. And then I tell the path to, in this case, I'm gonna document the SharePoint connector uh, to the app file uh, of, of the SharePoint connector. And you can see the, the build is almost the same. Now it's built instead of init. The output folder is the same. And in this case, it's not dash T, it's dash S that this is the one that we need documented. So when that is done, I call docfx build in the output folder, and then I ask docfx to serve that, that as a website. So let's, um, let's actually, uh, so let's run this step by step. So let's, uh, do something like this. Now I just want to see what that refresh command actually does. So we are here, so I say run. We remove the stuff. Um, and refresh needs a folder. Fair enough. So we will give that the output folder. Let's run again. And we cannot refresh because we just deleted it. So refresh, fair enough. That's only for if you already have a, a site and you want to update the uh, the, the raw temp, the docfx template. Um, okay, so we'll ignore that command. Excellent. So let's just have it run the init, see what happens. So we do init. It took a bit, so let's take a look at what, ah, oh, that's so small, so that's almost impossible. We will actually, you know, I'm a command line guy, so, uh, so we got a folder and we got a docfx json. That's pretty nice because we know that we are gonna need that for the build here. Uh, we got an index markdown file, we got a template and we got a table of contents, which seems very say SharePoint connector. Yeah. Um, if we go look in template, we can see there's content template and then there's business central application object HTML primary.json and template. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. I, I'm, I'm, we're not going to look at that right now. Uh, if we look at public, there's there's more stuff. So this is the template. So so we actually, if it's not doing exactly how you want to do it, there's I think there's there's room for hacking. Um, but 
that would be another video. So, uh, so I should probably start with it. I intend that all my apps are going to be documented this way and be sitting uh, uh, available on, on a web server. Uh, so if you need to use, in this case, the SharePoint connector or something else, uh, it, as a component in your own apps, there'll be documentation available. So um, I might need to, you know, tweak the template. Uh, so that might be another video at some point. Um, anyway, so clearly we we got some stuff here, but but we we also we don't really have anything other than this one says, hey, SharePoint connector. So let's. Uh, drop in it and do build. So now we'll call the build function. And now I need to make sure that we're not deleting the, the, the stuff we have. So right now we're incrementing. So don't, uh, I was just about to run it, but uh, hey. Um, so let's run that again. So now we're doing build. <laughs> Loaded reference module system by system application based application application. Uh, sure. Um, so what happened now? So let's go into output. And now there is a new folder called reference. And there's the folder called SharePoint connector. And now I think we, we get to the meat. So there's uh, like code unit, and then we can see there's a YAML file for every single code unit. So type API. So and we all love YAML. So here's a YAML file for that. Okay, that is probably nice. Um, so let's ignore that step and run the docfx step now. Boom, build succeeded with warning, 77 warnings. And that was all those, so let's actually see what happened here. Build searching custom plugin directory. There are no uh, six plugins loaded, so there are apparently plugins. Uh, post processor extract search index loaded. No files. No files are found with glob pattern. All right, files. Okay, that's a thing. One schema driven document processor plugin loaded. Building 157 files in Business Central application object build scheme. Yeah, building one file, building two files. So clearly it's eating uh, and, and consuming all our, our YAML files. And now it's saying that API endpoint source EFQ warning not found, unable to find UID O colon code unit colon colon templop. So I didn't reference and maybe, maybe I, Maybe I should. It it did say something about loaded system application, but but I I have no intention of documenting system application, so uh, I excluded it. Okay, so that is excellent. So we we what do do we get? So let's take another look at output, and now we can see that there's a new site, a new folder called underscore site. And here we got an index HTML, and if I go into reference, SharePoint connector, modules, SharePoint connector, uh, report, there are some reports, e-signature checker, things. Um, so a website has been created. So the last step in our file and let's just, it was simply to serve that up as a website. So if we go back to here and just run that, now we can see serving blah, 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 underscore site on localhost. And you can, I think there was a, uh, 
you can add a dash p if if that port number is in use on your machine so you can have it on a different one so i can control click on this uh, and i have a website here localhost 8080 sharepoint connector welcome to your new reference documentation this is the landing page for your generated reference documentation you can use the navigation bar at the top at the table navigate do good do you have a search you can change the content by editing the index.md file found in there we go the reference folder so i can click on i can click on sharepoint we got an overview this is the sharepoint connector 3.00170 um i can click on modules and i think the modules i'm getting here let's uh, verify that is kind of the same as the folder structure I have in my app. So I, I tend to make meaningful folders, uh, functional areas folders, uh, uh, but I'm a scatterbrain, so, so that's not always true. Um, but I guess that now I, uh, I kind of got her do that so e signature then under that they go tables coding and pages and that that is not my structure e signature in this case says adobe docusign and overview for me so it's only only in the first first level that would kind of be nice if it also took my my second levels tables we got it to set up we got Adobe and Einstein, we got pages, we got a report. So let's click on Adobe setup. So now we have an ID of the table, we can see all the fields and what is the key. See also table, which actually does link here. Huh? Okay, so maybe, maybe I was too quick to say something about version two. Uh, I don't. I can, I'm not able to click on date time. I guess that's too much to ask for. Um, what if I click on fact boxes and say page extension, and then I say sales quote because you can extend page sales quote. Hmm. And this might be because I'm missing base app, uh, the base app here. Um, Okay, so here's, here's the thing. So just before I, uh, I started the video, I did one thing. And the thing I did, let's see if we can get back to this, that in the, in my, this is this is the main, this is the SharePoint uh, main code unit. This is where, that's all the, all the, f the, the fun stuff, you know, upload a file, download a file, generate a file, uh, create a folder and metadata and you name it. But at least somewhere here, uh, there is a function called delete folder. And I added XML documentation for this, uh, for this function. So I imagine that I'm now able to go where did the search function go? It was up here. What do I do? Do I click overview? I click on this. Now I have a search function. So can I do delete folder here? I can. Uh, oh, not really because I'm not, this is not clickable. Let's, let's, uh, let's make it clickable. There we go. Um, delete folder, not delete file, delete folder. On before delete folder, we are not interested in that. Here. So delete folder. Delete a folder in SharePoint. So that would be this text. 
don't thank you um, this method yeah sure excellent thank you uh, there we go and um, there's there is no uh, user confirmation before the folder is deleted okay so actually let's go back to this one and say and now i'm just going completely from the top and i know i could do i could do the refresh instead of build uh, so now i'm just gonna run this entirely from the top again uh, just to know that my process from end to end works and it, it's actually pretty fast uh, maybe this is not such a big app um, so let's see okay and, and what did I did you yell at the screen you are entitled to yell at the screen now so what I did is that I, I I changed the documentation but I never actually built a new app file so now we got a new app file let's run the process again and see if uh, this is closer to to what I what I want Go boom boom boom. Back to this one. Control F five. There you go. So now I, this is updated. Uh, we got also as part of the uh, XML doc, we have the parameters and the return value. Um, so that's also documented here. Um, this is this is pretty nice so 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 but uh, so how, how are we going to use it in 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 production uh, because right now I'm I'm just having a bad file here kind of to wrap my head around how this process would work uh, and uh, of course this needs to be part of a uh, of a pipeline um, so so I'm, I'm gonna since I'm using AL build can find that on the on the channel uh, on github uh, I'm gonna add this into my AL build pipelines uh, so whenever I build a new version it will send off uh, pages to website and probably upload those to uh, uh, to the corresponding web service um, so I think this is this is very useful. I think then the next step for me is to mess around, you know, mess around with the template. Uh, it's kind of weird that the uh, so the, yeah the search function is is clearly incomplete. We got we got dark and we got light. Um, There's also something attachment EFQ code units attachment EFQ. There, there's still something in the menu that that not necessarily makes sense to me because I only have the EFQ postfix on object names. I do not have that on the folders. So I have a folder called attachments that has a single code unit called attachments, which, by the way, does not have anything right now, apparently. Um, but 
but here we get the the prefix from the object uh, so I, I need to figure out how this is actually built uh, and maybe I need to reorganize my 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 object a bit to uh, to make this happen uh, I, I would prefer to, to not show the uh, uh, the the post fix in the menu it's it's fine here I think that that's completely acceptable but here I would want the this just looks weird and 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 there's not even a because it's not con even if it was all of them it would still look weird but at least it would be consistent and now it's 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 kind of random um so i need to figure out if i can uh, i can man manipulate the uh, the template to to do that anyway we already past half an hour i do apologize for that uh I, f I find this very interesting and and, and very cool and uh, so this so here here's a, an intro you can stop watching now 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 it's just a bonus uh, I'm emptying emptying my head of of weird uh, weird things that the the power of Business Central having its own compiler and and everything that that because stuff like, I'm not saying this is trivial but not by any way uh, but it is kind of trivial because we have a compiler with a complete uh, uh, syntax tree we we have all the metadata available because the compiler produces it so it's Easy is perhaps the uh, uh, the wrong word, but it, it, it's it's more a matter of of just hard work using reusing all the components that is built anyway, uh, instead of having to you know sit down and create a parser and figure out if the multiple technologies and stuff. It's, it's I find it very cool uh, and. Um, and it shows the uh, shows the quality uh, of of the tool chain that, that Microsoft have built that they can add something like this uh, on top of it. So, with that being said, if you if you can manage any more AL hacking, uh, you know this video is for you, and it's a good one. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.